Hello, and welcome to the third webinar in the Innovations in Immune Mediated Skin Conditions webinar series. This webinar will focus on alopecia areata. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. My name is Lynn de Guzman, and I'm a Clinical Pharmacy Services Director at Kaiser Permanente, and I will be your moderator for today's program. The continuing education program was designed to achieve the learning objectives listed here. This program is supported by unrestricted educational grants from Pfizer Incorporated. The financial relationships reported by faculty for this program are shown here. AMCP is honored to partner with the Skin of Color Society to develop an additional resource for this program. Please be sure to download the information on the management of alopecia areata in a diverse population. AMCP would also like to extend our appreciation to the National Alopecia Areata Foundation for coordinating the patient voice we will hear in the program. It is now my pleasure to introduce our faculty for today's program. Our speakers today are Lauren Krieger and Stephen Kalusi. Dr. Krieger is an assistant professor of dermatology and vice chair for diversity, equity, and inclusion at Emory University School of Medicine. Dr. Kalusi is a manager at clinical pharmacy at Highland Incorporated. Faculty biographies can be found within the handout. Dr. Krieger, I pass the floor over to you. All right, well, let's jump right in with alopecia areata. Thanks again for, for highlighting this important disease. Great. So to start off, we know alopecia is just an umbrella term for hair loss, and alopecia areata is a type of hair loss. It's a non-scarring form of hair loss, meaning that the inflammation around the hair follicle does not completely destroy the hair follicle, and instead, we can regrow hair. Um, there are circular patches of this hair loss that typically present in your patchy form of alopecia areata. So throughout the scalp, you may see circular areas without hair. And it can also occur on other parts of the body, so anywhere with hair. So scalp, facial hair, body hair can also be affected. The disease is unpredictable and it can be episodic. So here are some other clinical pictures for you. And these are in darker um, skin types. So here on the occipital scalp, you see these larger round patches of alopecia. Again here, very few hairs within. Usually they're completely bald in these areas. Um, you may see white hairs. Usually you do not see any redness or erythema scaling. Now here's another picture, and you can kind of see in the background, there's total loss of hair on the scalp, and it's also affecting the brow in this area. How do you quantify? Um, so essentially the scalp is, is broken down into these four portions here. See the left, right, kind of topper crown and the occipital area, and you're looking at a, a cumulative score of how much hair is lost in each portion of this. So it's the sum of the percent hair lost um, times the surface area of scalp in each area. And that number is really going to be important for clinical trials, as I mentioned. Now, this is not an uncommon disease. Um, so it affects 2% worldwide, and it's more common in children than adults, we know, and it affects approximately 6.8 million people in the U.S. We do know there are increased rates in Black and Latino populations. It's unclear in Asian populations, um, and there tends to be a female predominance, in, I'm sorry, in Black patients, there's a female predominance, younger age of presentation, and an increased association with ATP, which I'll talk about later which is very interesting. I'll also take a second here to mention that this disease has significant impact on quality of life. So it's not uncommon and it is very impactful for patients who have alopecia areata. You may have seen on the wonderful handout that was created, there's a 39% lifetime prevalence of depression, 62% also have a generalized anxiety disorder. Um, there's higher healthcare spending in these patients. 
including a whopping around $1,300 of annual out-of-pocket spending, um, which is can be quite a bit for patients. So it's not uncommon and it has significant impact on quality of life.